Hey, how you doing? I'm Zach Hill. I'm here with Master of the Lightning Bolt at Basic Mountain on Twitter, Patrick Sullivan. <laughs> Howdy, Zach. Hi, it's very good to see you. Now, what deck are you playing today at Pro Tour Dragon's Maze? So I'm playing Boros Aggro. Uh, it's been around in various iterations basically since Magic existed, but uh -huh. the goal of the deck is to get on the board fast with a bunch of cheap, efficient creatures, and then close the game out with a mixture of burn spells and creature pump effects. Awesome. So let's actually take a look at some of those cheap, efficient creatures, because uh, you have a lot of them. Now we see Cackler, Legion Loyalist, Foundry Street Denizen, core of all of the red decks we're seeing over here, as well as Dryad Militant, which uh, you can't cast in mono red. 16 one drops, that's pretty fast. Uh, tell us, like, wh how did you arrive at this specific suite of creatures? Well, like you said, these three kind of represent the saturation of right. one drops you need in mono red to get off to fast starts. Dry Militant is basically another addition to that slot. I think, particularly against Esper, it's very important to get off to the fastest possible start before they take go, start taking over the game with things like Sphinx's Revelation and Jace, Architect of Thought, and so on. What's also nice about Dry Militant is we can cast it off of Burning Tree Emissary oh, yeah. in addition to another one drop on the second turn. So it gives you an access to another explosive uh, Burning Tree Emissary draw. That makes a lot of sense. So with 16 one drops, you're going to draw multiple of these in your opening hand sometimes. Which of these creatures like do you like to, you know, how do you know which one to cast on the first turn of the game? It's almost certainly not this guy if you can avoid okay. it. It's, it's either between Cackler or Foundry, Street right. Denizen. The biggest thing is if you have a Burning Tree Emissary, you almost certainly want to leave with, it, with Denizen okay. because then you can play Emissary and then an additional red creature mm. to get this guy up to three power. Uh, Cackler you want to lead with in scenarios where you're worried about a pinging effect such as is it Static Caster, okay. maybe like Trickery in Coast Board games, where you want to lead off with as many two toughness creatures in general. But generally because Foundry Street Denizen is very good early on and quickly gets worse, you right. want to lead with this creature. You kind of want to get the damage out while you can while yes. there's not a lot on the board. Alright, let's take a look at the next slide. Uh, we just heard Patrick mention, of course, Burning Tree Emissary. These are your two drops. Now, Burning Tree Emissary, pretty self-explanatory, you know, comes out really quick. It's obviously a free creature. Fire Fist Striker, I think, may merit a little more explanation. There's a lot of other two drops you can play in this slot. Why is this guy so effective? Fire Fist Striker is very important to being the green decks. Okay. Most of their plans against you involve clogging up the ground with things like Voice, Locks on Smiter, what have you, and grinding the game down to the point where they can start taking over the game, whether it's with additional big creatures, whether it's with Advent of the Worm, and then beginning to populate, and so on. So this is very important in turns three, four, and five of pushing through the defenses that the green decks are trying to set up. And you actually, you mentioned Advent of the Worm. Between Fire Fist Striker and Legion Loyalist, not going to get ambushed as many times as uh, one may expect. I mean, obviously, if they cast it during combat, this doesn't help you. But once it's on the board, this guy can power through that. Yeah, we talk about Mono Red and Boros, obviously. Yeah. They're red, dense decks. But in this format, they actually play much closer to White Weenie decks, oh, where yeah. you hit the ground with quality creatures, and you have ways to make blocking prohibitive for your opponent. You actually don't have a lot of ways to close out the game. The amount of haste that you have, the amount of quality burn is actually fairly low. Oh, so okay. this deck plays actually much closer to a white weenie deck than a typical mono red deck, even though the threats are primarily red. All right, now there is one card that does look at home in a white weenie deck, as uh, Patrick was talking about. Let's take a look at this guy. Frontline Medic, kind of a 3-3 three, three for 3, does two very different things. One when it attacks and two other creatures attack, all your guys are indestructible. You can attack with impunity. He also counters spells with Exus's mana cost. Now, when I was looking at the deck list, I didn't know which one of those is more important. Could you tell us a little bit about that? For me, the battalion ability is much more important. Like I said, in the green matchups, what's happening is your opponent's trying to clog the board down with creatures. Every Legion Loyalist you draw shuts down their tokens. Every Fire Fist Striker you draw shuts down a Locks on Smiter or similar creatures. Every creature that they have beyond kind of your pacing of Legion Loyalists and Fire Fist Strikers is very troubling to get through. So what Frontline Medic allows you to do is just swing with all of your creatures every turn. Your guys don't die when they're attacking and it makes it easier to push through additional points of damage in the mid, in the mid game when it's often challenging to do so. Awesome, all right, so the deck is not just creatures. We obviously have some spells and it wouldn't be a Pat Sullivan deck without at least some ability to cast <laughs> burn. Now a card that people may not look at and think of as like an automatic constructive four of is Dyna Charge, yet that card's a staple today. Why is this card so good? Well, beyond the fact that it has a lot of closing speed, you have 16 one drops, so giving plus two plus zero to your team of knuckleheads is awesome. <laughs> and you, it 
pairs it very well with Legion Loyalist because it gives your team first strike and trample. So plus two plus oh is very nice there. It's also nice with Battlefield Medic because often your opponent is working under the assumption that you're just attacking with your small creatures because it's a free roll, because they have indestructible and you're just trying to push through some damage. So they're often making blocks, like I'll put a locks on a spider in front of your two two because it's a, you're just kind of attacking for free. When you have Dia Charge in that scenario, then you're often turning those, those combats where your opponent's just kind of staying alive into blowouts because you're taking care of all their creatures. And you can get through a little bit more damage that way as well. Now obviously Boros Charm, uh, two key abilities dealing four to the face and uh, being able to make your team indestructible, obviously really, really good against Supreme Verdict. Right? Yeah, this is, it would be impossible to rationalize building the deck without this card. <laughs> Boros Charm is never dead because it's always four damage to the face, and the indestructible portion is very valuable against Supreme Verdict decks for obvious reasons. And even the third power, the double strike, does come up in corner case scenarios, especially post-board. So very powerful and very versatile. All right, now finally we've got Mizium Mortars, just as a really good, clean kill spell in the format, takes care of almost everything else. I want to look at the mana base pretty briefly, because it's actually kind of interesting, a little bit counterintuitive. Now, you're a red-white aggro deck. Uh, but you've got Sacred Foundry as well as Temple Garden and Stomping Ground. Now, what are those cards doing for us today? So Sacred Foundry is obvious. We have both red and white mana in the Clearly. deck. Yeah. So that one needs no explanation. We figured it out. Stomping Ground is a mountain that allows you to cast Dryad Militant. And Temple Garden is a plains that allows you to play Burning Tree Emissary. So those are, it's a little complicated a little non-intuitive, but those dual lands are basically cross-sections to allow you to cast some of the hybrid mana spells that you can't necessarily cast off of basic lands. Right, so it's not just to dip into another color, it's actually to just make your, you know, you can play Dryad Militant into Burning Tree Emissary by bridging the green that both of those cards have in their mana cards. Correct. Awesome, okay, so obviously next slide, we'll take a look at it. It's just some basic lands. Three planes, six mountain. Now, relevantly, that means there's only three lands in your deck that can't class Burning Tree Emissary. Mm -hmm. I mean, very easy to dump your hand the first couple of turns. I want to take a look at your sideboards. You were telling me something pretty interesting earlier on. If we can take a look at these. Uh, now, first, we, we've got two different three drops here. Boros Reckoner and Vishno First Blade. So your main decking frontline medic. It sounds like these two are good and uh, against kind of just totally different cross sections of decks. Is that is it really a one of you know kind of bring out medic, bring in another three drop, or is it more complicated than that? It's about that simple. Frontline medic in the post board games is as best against green, and you okay. want to keep it there. Boros Reckoner is particularly good against other red aggressive decks. Obviously, it plays like Moat sometimes. It's incredible on offense. No explanation needed. <laughs> this guy, a little bit more complicated. By you know, first blade, in my opinion, the most critical tool that you need to beat the Esper decks is a lot of haste. They're playing a lot on their main phase, and you need to fight through cards like Jace and Supreme Verdict. Mm. So the more haste creatures you add to your deck, the better. So this basically gets subbed in for Battlefield Medic, or Frontline Medic, rather. Sorry, <laughs> against the Esper decks, and this gets swapped in against red aggro decks. That makes sense. And, and finally, the, the other card, in the other creature in your sideboard, not a card that we're seeing just tons and tons of, but uh, explain Spark Trooper for us. Again, more haste. That's the best recipe oh, yeah. that you can have against Esper. It's especially good against Jace, because if they Jace and plus one to minus one attack, still kills this it. kills it clean. You can get some weird combo draws if the game drags out with things like Dino Charge and mm -hmm. Boros Charm. And so, even though the, the lifelink power is not really relevant in that matchup, I would gladly pay four, light, four mana for Ball Lightning. And so, here it is. It, arguably, there should be a third copy in the sideboard. It's very important for beating Esper. Now, do you bring it in because of the lifelink against red decks just for a six-point life swing, or is that actually not good enough? The, the problem is that most of the good post-board cards in red mirror matches mm -hmm. are Electricery and Boros Reckoner, oh, okay. which this card matches up very poorly with. Obviously, Electricery just colds it. And if they have a Boros Reckoner on D with mana up, then right. you can't even attack. Yeah, right. So, it has first strike, so the trample doesn't matter. In the abstract, you would imagine, okay, so it's a big damage swing, right. you gain a bunch of life, which is relevant. But the red decks in this format are a lot more about playing to the board. And this kind of just doesn't match up the right way, the way the games play out. So, sort of like you said, the red decks really are kind of white weenie decks in disguise. Yeah, absolutely. They just cast their creature faster. All right, let's close out this sideboard. Uh, finally, you're taking a look here at Active Treason. What do you want that card against? Particularly locks it on Smiter Dex and Lotless Troll. Okay. The game again bogs down. Often they're in a position where they have to pump into a Lotless Troll very early in the game to sort of stabilize the ground and take over from there. Active Treason is very powerful in those spots. So you mostly want it for the green decks, particularly ones with Lotless Troll. Now there's another Active Treason variant in the set. Same cost, one more mana, gives a plus two plus oh. 
D does that bonus simply not matter in those matchups? It matters less than the one mana indifference <laughs> cost. There's only 21 lands in the deck. You're often a little bit clogged with three mana spells, and I didn't feel like you could risk having another spell that, that could be sitting dead in your hand. Uh, I want to be casting things as efficiently as possible, and so the plus two plus zero would be nice, but it's really important to have the cheapest spells possible. It can't always be that greedy. All right, Electricery. Now, it seems like in a lot of these red deck mirrors, your opponent has a million one toughness creatures. Is that what this for? Yeah, and it's, it's especially important because the most meaningful cards in the mono red mirror mm -hmm. match, with the exception of Boros Reckoner, are the one toughest creatures. Oh, okay. Legion Loyalist and Firefish Striker are what allow you to leverage your early advantages into gains that are insurmountable. So blunting those creatures in particular is very important. There are other tools you could play. You could play Mugging instead if you wanted right. to have something a little bit more flexible. But for me, the potential to blow someone out with the Overload if they have many creatures in play, and to fight over the creatures that in my opinion, are the creatures that really matter uh, gave this the not over mugging. Awesome. And then finally, we've got the last copy of Mortars. Again, just kind of a good solid kill spell. Kills smiters, kills things like that. And your, sometimes you get six mana. Your opponent might have a creature, and then this card's pretty sweet. <laughs> sometimes it's that simple. Brilliant advice, Patrick. Yep. All right, thank you so much. I'm Zach Hill here at the Tournament Center with Patrick Sullivan, with Boros Agro, here at Pro Tour Dragon's Maze. Let's take it away.